minus 210 degrees, we have our unit circle, which we're going to learn to fill out, hopefully at the end of the lesson today, but we'll see where we get on time. So at 210 degrees, sign is the X or Y value, which one? It's the Y value, okay, good, and what is the answer? Negative a half, did everybody get that? Raise your hand, so I know who got it. Yep, awesome, that is true. And then how about cosine of negative 30 degrees? So that would be going like, if we have an X, Y chart, that would be taking our initial side and doing our terminal side going down that way, negative 30 degrees, correct everybody? So what is our, cosine is our X value, so what is it? Square root of three over two, very good. How many of you got that part right? I noticed many of you, and many of you got full points. All right, awesome. So we're going to be using the unit circle today, and now we're just, last time we were dealing with all degree measures, today we're going to be dealing with radian measures. Luckily, it's very, uh, uh, it's very similar. So a degree is the central angle. It's the measure of the central angle. So you all have your worksheet. Um, you will have some place to take notes on the side somewhere. So first of all, the degree is the central angle. Notice all of these have an angle. Here's our center. And we're opening up our angle. Like, for example, here's our initial side and our terminal side right there is 30 degrees. So that's our central angle of 30 degrees right there. So what a radian is, you guys, instead of the actual measure of the angle, a radian is the physical length of the arc that the angle intersects. So do you see how this central angle opens up on that highlighted arc? Everybody? Yeah. The radian is the physical length of the arc that is um, opening on that angle. The physical length of the arc. So, you can switch from a degree to a radian and a radian back to degree. So, they're equal. They're just different forms. Um, so, uh, engineers use radian measures rather than um, degree measures. Because if I said to you, okay, I need to, you to go draw. I mean, I need you to go work, for example like on a sewage pond, and I need you to build a fence around it so people don't get into the sewage pond. I need the um, the fence to be 30 degrees. The person's going to be like, what? You need how much fencing? 30 degrees worth of fencing. Well, what? how much fencing? So you would actually give them, as an engineer, the physical length, the physical amount. Does that make sense, everybody? The physical length of 30 degrees. So how we do that is we convert from, so I just want to say one thing. Also, do you see how this 30 degrees says pi 6? That's the radian measure of 30 degrees. The physical length from here to here is pi 6. So what I want you to do is type into your calculator pi divided by 6 and give me the decimal answer. So pi divided by 6. So this is 0.52 radians in length. Um, and so there's pi radians and then just regular radians. So we know that pi 6, this is called pi radians. This is how a mathematician would want the answer. And an engineer, so you're going to hear me say the mathematician answer, this is in pi radians. In decimal radians, like the physical decimal, would be 0.52 radians. And that's just having the pi multiplied in, as in like divided in. Does everybody see the difference? They're equal. Just one is in pi radians where the other is just in radians. So pi is already factored into it. So an engineer would want that answer where a mathematician would want that answer. So we're going to practice with both. So I'm going to teach you how to convert from 30 degrees because this is also 30 degrees. I'm going to teach you how to convert from 30 degrees to this, and then now we know how to get to this. So you have to have all three. So everybody look. 45 degrees is pi force. So that means, guys, from... Here to here is how many radians, that distance. So type in pi divided by 4. Just so we get an idea of how radians are working. What is that? 0. 0.785 radians. So pi force would be the, in, um, the math answer, and the ra uh, engineer answer would be 0. 0.78. So is everybody kind of seeing how this is working a little bit? Let's maybe do, for fun, let's do how much physical distance is that? Halfway around the circle. So our central angle would be 180 degrees. How much physical length of the arc is that? So we know that that's pi. So can anyone remember the decimal for pi? Good. So that's pi. 180 degrees is pi. That would be the math answer, which is 3.14 radians. Or this is pi radians. And that's how it kind of works. So everybody, a full circle here has how many radians? This is one thing to know. 
A full circle has two pi radians, right? Which is how many decimal radians? Two times pi. Go for it. 6.28. So about 6.3 radians is a full circle, everybody. About 6.3 is a full circle in radians. Now notice all of my, how many in a circle is in my radius one? From over here to here, from this center of our circle to this point out here, isn't that over one? So this is a radius of one. Um, we're going to get into some in a minute that don't have a radius of one, and that will factor in to our answer. Because think about it, guys. We have a radius of one, and we blow up our circle. Now it's still 6.3 radians, but it can't be the actual physical di same distance, right? That's impossible. So you have to consider the, ra the radius of one. So see how this is a radius of one? One times 6.3, so it's just 6.3. So if we blow that up to two... You would just take the 2 times 6.3. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, awesome. We'll get there. Okay, here we go. I'm going to have all my examples coming off your worksheet again. So go to number one. Um, write a note. This is how we switch from something in degree measures to radians. You take the degree measure, for example, 45 degrees. You take the degree measure, and you multiply by pi over 180. So we can switch from degrees to radians by multiplying by pi over 180 degrees. Now, we're not changing anything, because isn't pi halfway around the circle here? Isn't that halfway around the circle? Which is also 180 degrees. So do you see how we're just multiplying by a fancy one? Pi is the same thing as 180, right? So we're just multiplying by a fancy one. We're not changing the answer, we're just changing the form of the answer by multiplying by one. A fancy one, so now you'll take your calculator, because we know when we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. 45 times pi is 45 pi. On bottom, we have 1 times 180, which is 180. Now, I can't stress enough, but I'm going to want to see the pi radian answer over anything. So I want you to type into your calculator. Do not type in pi, or else your calculator cannot convert it back to its simplified fraction. The pi cannot be written as a fraction. So I just want you to type in your calculator... 45 divided by 180, not pi, pi over 4. So that's simple. Are you sure? Simplified to be 1 4? It's true, it did. So it, so it simplified to be 1 4, so it simplified to be pi 4. So 45 degrees is pi 4, you guys, in pi radians. Everybody understand? Okay, here's a trick I use to help you notice. Oh, we'll go back to the trick in a minute. Okay, let's convert negative 240 degrees to radians. So we're going from degrees to radians, so we'll multiply by pi over 180, which that's really just putting negative 240 pi on top, 180 on bottom, and now you'll take your calculator and type in negative 240 divided by 180. I want the simplified answer in rate, pi radians. 4 thirds. So this became a 4, this became a 3. So our answer is negative 4 pi thirds. Now understand, they're equal. One is the measure of the central angle. One is the measure of the arc, but they're equal. They're just different forms. One's the physical distance, and one is the angle that it opened up on the distance. So they really are equal, just different formats. Okay, let's go the other way. Let's switch from something that's in radians back to degrees, which is very useful, because if I say to you, graph pi, graph pi 6, isn't it easier to graph a degree measure? So you would want to convert it maybe back to degrees. So to go from radians to degrees, you just switch. Instead of multiplying by pi over 180, you put the 180 on top and the pi on bottom. So... Here we go. Let's switch pi 6 to degrees. So I'm going to erase the radians just so I have room to write. So we're going to multiply by 180 over pi. So here we go. Isn't that we're going to go like this? When we multiply straight across, that's 180 pi. And on bottom, we have 6 pi. Now don't my pi's divide out? Pi over pi is 1. So now you'll just type in 180 divided by 6. So look, pi and pi divided out. You'll type in 180 divided by 6. 30 degrees, everyone. 30 degrees is a lot easier to graph than pi 6. So 1.8 radians.
ingredients. We can't let this throw us off, even though, notice there's no pi there. There technically is a pi, it's just multiplied in already. Does that make sense, everyone? So what we're gonna do is do the same thing. 1.8 times by 180 over pi. So you'll do 1.8 times 180, and we have to actually divide by pi this time. Because the pi's didn't divide out. They will divide out technically, but we gotta do it by calculator. So type that in. 1.8 times 180 divided by pi, what do you get? 103.13 degrees. So 103.13 degrees roughly, or we could just do 103.1 degrees. <clears throat> so it won't be an exact degree measure, but that's okay. Okay, here's a little trick to help you remember. Well, first of all, the one of the tricks is notice, this is like what you do in physics and in chemistry. Don't our degrees, if we're trying to go from degrees to radians, don't our degrees need to cancel out? So if there's a degree on top, degrees have to be on bottom. So notice that the 180 degrees had to be on bottom because you had a degree on top. Does everybody understand? So the degrees cancel out, giving you a radian that's left over. So then if you're going from a radian, you'll have something in radians, like pi, 6 pi, for example. You say, okay, I need the pi to go away because I'm trying to make it a degree. So pi's got to be on bottom. So I put 180 on top so that my radians cancel out. Everybody understand? Okay, cool. Sweet. So it says, go to 36 with me. It says, draw an angle in standard position with each given measure, then find the values of sine and cosine to the nearest tenth. So it's two pi ninths. It's way hard to draw in radians. So let's change it to degrees, and then it's easy to draw in. So it's the pi needs to divide out, right? So we need it in degrees. So that means 180 degrees has got to be on top, and on bottom, pi has got to be so that my pi's divide out. So now look. We're converting from um, radians to degrees so that we can graph it easier. So now you take your calculator, do 2 times 180, divided by 9. So what degree measure are we going to graph here? 40, 40 degrees? Yeah. Which equals 40 degrees. So then you go off to the side and you draw in a standard xy chart. So it said draw in standard position. That just means draw on an xy chart. And remember, when we're drawing in degrees, we draw in our initial side. And we draw in our terminal side, so 40 degrees somewhere over here is positive 40 degrees. So you're going to draw your little arrow showing I went positive direction. 40 degrees. That's good enough for me. And then it says, what's the sine and the cosine to the nearest tenth? Is 40 degrees on our unit circle? No. So we would just go ahead and type it into our calculator. If it's not on our unit circle as a special angle, you just type it in. So you would say... The cosine of 40 degrees equals, type it into your calculator, and we get 0.76. Very good. And then the sine of 40 degrees, you type it into your calculator, making sure your calculator's mode is in degree mode, because you're typing in something in degrees, and you would say 0.64. And we're done. Pretty easy, right? Okay. Go to 33. It says, determine the quadrant. Remember there are a couple different quadrants. So determine the quadrant or the xy axis where each angle lies. So we have this xy, right? Here we go. Here's xy. Here's quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant Four, which is written like this and then we know that this is the x this is the x-axis between quadrant one and two this is the y-axis between quadrant one and two this is the x-axis between quadrant two and three this is the y-axis between quadrant three and four okay so it says determine the quadrant or axis where the terminal side of each angle lies the terminal side just means where it opens up on now it's way hard to know where that lies in my circle here. So let's convert it to degrees. You've got to get the radians to cancel out, so we'll put the radian part on bottom. The radians need to divide out. Boom, boom. So now for me, type it into your calculator. 8 times 180 divided by 7. 
205.7 degrees, correct? So approximately 206 degrees is what we're plotting here. Now think about it, right? Here's zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, very good. So where is this gonna fall, in which quadrant? Three, that's all we gotta know, it's come somewhere in between here. We don't even need to be exact, we just said determine the quadrant. So we'd say quadrant three, and then it, that's it. We're done. It says determine the quadrant, where it lies. Quadrant three. Just a quick question for you. On the test, I'm gonna say, what is the sine and cosine's value? Is it positive or negative? So in quadrant three, isn't that negative x, negative y? So our sine would be negative, and our cosine will be negative, because that's a negative x, negative y point. Cosine's x, sine is y. Everybody good? Okay, sweet, go for it. That's all for a little bit. I'm gonna give you some time to not practice. Stick with the problems I just assigned. Talked about how, yeah, we can draw a circle, and we can, so I just wanna make a point here. If I draw a circle, and I have a central angle of 30 degrees, that's sweet. Well, the length of this arc, so this angle and this arc have, um, they go hand in hand, right? They're equal, this is just the physical distance. Now if I draw some huge circle, I can still open a 30 degree angle, but is this distance gonna be the same as this distance? No, so what changes it? Well, the radius changes it. Here's our radius. So the radiuses are different, so the physical length of that arc will be different, even though both of those angles are 30 degrees. So to find the length of an arc, you take the radius times by theta. Now we don't want our answer to be in degrees, so I don't wanna see 600 degrees, I want the physical length of the arc. If we're trying to find the length of the arc, we don't want a degree measure, we want the radian measure instead. So we just gotta make sure our angle is in radians, not in degrees. So if you need to convert it, then just convert it real quick. So instead of 30 degrees, I would convert it to radians by multiplying by pi over 180. Does everybody understand? Oh, we just learned to convert degrees to radians. Okay, so that we get the physical length, not the degree measure. Okay, so everybody go to 21. It says find the physical length of this arc. The physical length of this arc here. So we want to know what this highlighted arc is. So we have 4 inches is our radius. 7 pi 8 is already in radians. So all we have to do is S is equal to, that means the length of the arc, so S is equal to the length of the arc, our radius times theta, where theta is in radians. So our radius is four inches times by theta. Luckily, this one's already in radians, so seven pi eight. So I want the two answers. I want the mathematician answer, and I want, if you were an engineer, you would not want the mathematician answer. You want how much acres am I talking here? How much inches am I talking here? You know what I mean? So you would actually give me both. So go to, you're at 21. Are we on the same 21? Yep, okay. So we get S is equal to four times seven. Do not multiply pi into your calculator. So we're multiplying straight across. Seven, four times seven divided by eight. Math, enter, enter. So we want the simplified fraction. Does everybody know how to do it? So that would be seven pi halves inches. Seven pi half inches is how much that is literally covering that many inches. So this is very applicable in the real world. That is literally how many inches. But a, an engineer would say, what do you mean seven pi half inches? I wanna know, tell me how many inches. So you would actually type pi in into your calculator if you were giving this to an engineer. So that is approximately how many inches? 11 inches, isn't it? Yeah. So do you see how 11 inches is more usable in like the real world? 11 inches worth of whatever. Cool, moving on. That's it, that's all I'm giving you is one example. So I want you to do 21 through 26 on the front. So that's just finishing up that little section on the front, then flip to the back page and do 19 through 22. Ready, set, go. Formula, you'd say, okay, S is equal to radius times theta, where theta is the central angle in radians. 24 on the back, please. Everybody go to it or else you are going to be lost if you keep working on the other stuff. So now that you understand how to use this and how to do the math behind it, let's apply it in the real world because that's where it's important. So it says, suppose a windshield wiper has a length of 22 inches and rotates through an angle of 110 degrees. 
What is the distance? What distance does the tip of the wiper travel as it moves across the windshield? So I'm just going to draw a quick little picture so we get what's going on here. So if we have a windshield, they're usually like squarish, and your windshield wiper is down here, let's say, and it comes out like this, right? Everybody? As it's going across your window, isn't it moving like this back and forth? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. So it says, suppose a windshield has a length, a windshield wiper has a length of 22 inches. So that means our radius is 22 inches, isn't it? And then it's rotating, so it's going to be moving, but I'm going to draw the other side. It's going to be moving through an angle of 110 degrees. What distance does the tip of the wiper travel across the windshield one time? Now you got to read the, so it's only one time. So are we just finding that? So now we have, okay, the length of that is radius times theta. So S is equal to arc length. That length will be our radius, 22 inches, times 110 degrees, times theta. But doesn't theta need to be in radians? Because we want the physical distance. We don't want to say how many. Tell me if we put this as our answer. What would our answer be? 2,420 degrees. Well, that's not the physical. That's the degrees, right, everybody? Okay, so let's convert it to radians. How do we take from a degree to a radian? Multiply by pi over 180 degrees. We need our degrees to cancel out. So how about you give me the math answer and then also give me the actual answer. So type in 2,420 divided by 180, math enter, enter. What is it? Nobody? 2,420 divided by 180, math enter, enter. 120, 121 pi over 9 and then inches, right? That would be the math answer, yes? Yeah, but almost would be easier to convert 110 back here, right? But either way will work. Good point. We could convert it back there. So now that is our answer. We could have converted 110 and then done that as well. Both ways are great. Thank you. That's true, Margaret. So now let's actually give me the actual inches because where this is a real world problem, we'd rather know the actual inches. So type in 121 times pi divided by nine, quickly. 42.2 inches. That's how much distance that covered on your windshield. Okay, awesome. Now this one takes a little bit more in depth thinking, but I know you guys can do that for me. So go to 27. on the first page. So it says the minute hand of a clock is eight inches long. What distance does it travel in 10 minutes? So this is gonna take a little bit more thinking, which we can do. This is more likely what would be seen on an ACT. So everybody, the minute hand is this. So from here to here is eight inches, right? Now if it travels, think about a clock here. You've gotta think and you've gotta maybe, you've gotta really think about a clock. If it travels 10 minutes, right here would be 5, right? Where would be 10, right? So I'm going to draw this over here. So it doesn't matter, right? We think about it. Okay, true. Let's, 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 let's be more realistic about it, maybe. Let's go like this, 5, 10. Yeah? Okay, let's be more realistic about it instead of just drawing whatever. Good point. Good point to make. So it wants to know what distance has it traveled. That means what's the length of this arc? Don't we need to know theta to figure that out? Well, can anyone think of maybe how we could figure out how many degrees that is? Yeah. Okay, I like that idea. That's exactly what we would do, right? So it's split into 60 minutes, right? So 360 divided by 60. I mean 60 divided by 360. That would be how many, what would that give us though? What is it? One sixth of the clock. But that would be going around, so that split up 60. So how many degrees is that going to be? Let's see. I'm thinking too hard about it. 
What does that give me though? Let's think. Okay, there's many ways we can do it. Yes? How would you do it? I just take the portion that is 90 degrees, that goes uh, clockwise, from 12 to 3, and then divide that into 30, which is the 1, 2, and 3. And then you just yeah. take 60 of that. Okay, yeah, so there's many ways we can do it. I see what you're saying. So that's kind of the same way I was thinking through it. I was thinking that's 10 minutes out of 60, right? There's so many ways to do it. You're right, you're right, you're all right. There's just different ways. That's the thing we all think so differently. That's what's hard about this problem is it's like there's so many ways. So I'm like, oh, I want to go with the way I thought of it because it makes sense to me, but you might do it the way that makes sense to you, and that's okay. So I said, I was thinking too, this is right, so then you can figure out how many degrees that's going to be. If 60 out of 360 is 1 6, then where is that going to put me at? So you could also say that's 10 minutes out of 60, which is what percent of an hour? Go, tell me. 10 divided by 60. 1 6 of an hour, correct? So it's not 1 6 of 360. So we're coming to the same thing. Like you said, 1 6 of 360 degrees. So 360 times 1 6 is how many degrees? So Ryan's right, we're all thinking differently, coming up with the conclusion. How much degree? 60 degrees. So we're actually dealing with 60 degrees here. So now S is equal to our radius, which is 8 inches, times theta, which is 60 degrees. We don't want our answer to be in degrees, so let's multiply by pi over 180. Isn't that okay? So now to take 8 times 60 divided by 180. Let's give my the pi answer. 8 times 60 divided by 180. 8 pi thirds, and let's give me the, and that was inches, so now give me the actual physical amount that we covered on the clock. 8.4 inches. Let's see if I got that. Yep, 8.5 is more what I got, but I think that's really good. It was just around here. I can have my part. 8.4 inches. Everybody agree? Hey, awesome. Really good. I'm really glad a lot of you were able to try to say like, oh, I could have figured out what degree measure that was. That's pretty impressive because it kind of threw me off for a second until it hit me. Okay, very good. Hey, finish all of it except for the only problem you are not assigned is 23 on the back page. So go to the very back page, cross out 23. But the rest is assigned. Every other single problem you should be able to do. For the rest of the time is yours. If you can finish it in class today, hand it in.